Henry Nouwen was a world-renowned author, professor, activist, and Catholic priest. The oldest of four children, he was born on January 24, 1932, in Nijkirk, Holland. During the German occupation in World War II, he did a lot for his family, such as helping hide his father from the Germans or riding his bike through the countryside in search of food. From a young age, he knew that he wanted to be a Catholic priest when he grew up. His grandmother even made him child-sized vestments and an altar so that he could pretend to celebrate the Eucharist with his siblings and friends. In 1957, he was ordained as a diocesan priest. He then spent six years at the Catholic University of Nijmegen, where he became a psychologist. Afterwards, he went to work and study at a psychiatry hospital called the Menninger Clinic, where he worked in their religion and psychiatry program. He wanted to combine psychology and theology into a religious education program back in the Netherlands. While he was in America, he even participated in the Selma to Montgomery March. For the better part of the next 20 years, Nowen taught psychology, pastoral psychology, spirituality, and theology at prestigious universities like Notre Dame, Yale Divinity School, and Harvard Divinity School. He was a popular professor and wrote many books throughout these years. During this time, he gained an interest in liberation theology and political developments in Latin America. In 1981, he spent six months with the Mary Knoll fathers and brothers to determine if it was his calling to serve the poor in Peru. Although it wasn't his calling, his experience profoundly impacted his worldview and helped develop his passion for social justice. He also traveled to Guatemala to write Love in a Fearful Land, a Guatemalan story. It was a book about Father Francis Rother, a missionary who was murdered by a Guatemalan death squad and whose work was later carried on by his friend, Father John Vesey. Nowen wanted to uncover the story of this modern-day martyr, whose deep love and faith allowed him to serve the Lord, even while his life was in peril. While he was at Harvard, he would spend half the year teaching, and the other half traveling throughout Latin America or lecturing in North America. He never felt fully committed to either task, and began to yearn for a sense of community in his life. Because of this, he decided to resign from his position at Harvard in 1985. A conversation with Jean Vanier, the founder of the L'Arche Community Movement, inspired Nouwen to spend a year writing about his time at the original L'Arche community in France. L'Arche, which is French for the Arc, is an international faith-based movement of communities that welcome people with disabilities, where they live in community with assistants who support them full-time. In 1986, Nouwen accepted an invitation to become the full-time pastor of the Daybreak L'Arche community in Toronto, Canada. This was the homecoming that Henry was longing for after decades of uncertainty and change throughout his life. While at Daybreak, Nowen was one of the caretakers for a man named Adam Arnett, whom he wrote a book about, titled Adam, God's Beloved. Under the surface, his relationship with Adam was unlike any other. Adam was helpless and depended on Nowen for his basic and emotional needs. Adam didn't speak, yet Henry was all about words. Adam didn't read, yet Henry was all about books. Despite these differences, the two of them developed such a strong bond, and Henry spoke of Adam as his greatest teacher. To some of you, this may sound familiar, and that's because in CCC, we read one of Nowen's articles, titled Adam's Peace, which is about the same Adam that we are talking about right now. This excerpt from Adam's Peace reveals the significance that Adam had on Nowen's life. Adam's peace is not only a peace rooted in being, but also a peace rooted in the heart. Somehow through the centuries, we have come to believe that what makes us human is our mind. Many people define a human being as a rational animal. But Adam keeps telling me over and over again that what makes us human is not our mind, but our heart. Not our ability to think, but our ability to love. Whoever speaks about Adam as a vegetable or an animal-like creature misses the sacred mystery that Adam is fully capable of receiving and giving love. He is not half human, not nearly human, but fully, completely human, because he is all heart, and it is the heart that is made in the likeness of God. Sadly, Adam Arnett died in early 1996, and this prompted Nowen to reflect on their friendship by writing Adam, God's Beloved. Unfortunately for Nowen, this was one of his last works. On September 21st, 1996, Henry Nowen passed away from a heart attack. Ironically, September 21st happens to be the International Day of Peace, and peace was a common subject that Nowen's writings focused on. Nowen's writings have sold millions of copies and have been translated into 22 different languages. Nearly 25 years later, he is still a very popular Christian author. After his death, his personal letters and writings revealed that he was a closeted homosexual, and his sexuality and celibacy were things that he wrestled with throughout his entire life. His struggles enabled him to identify with and deeply understand marginalized people such as himself, and this was apparent through his work in Latin America and large communities. 
Nowen's writings were centered around relationships, showing love for one another, and finding meaning in the simplicity of life.